worship. A special welcome to all of those who are worshiping with us live stream. Uh, St. Stephen here in Silver Spring, Maryland is continuing to uh, be cautious and we are grateful for all the work everyone is doing in order to see our cases go down and and we pray for anyone who has contracted COVID and we want to not be a part of spreading it any further than it already is spreading. So thank you all for your patience. We look forward to next Sunday when we'll make a decision as it relates to February. But for now, through January, we are remaining using all the technology to continue in worship and to continue in our ministries and our meetings and our planning for this upcoming ministry year. We'll hear more about that in our announcements at the end of our worship. Today is a day where we rejoice and we remember and we um, are continually reminded that God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light for our path. And so as you are at home, we invite you to take and light a candle. It doesn't have to be any special candle, but any candle that both is the light of Christ coming into the world, but also God's word that was light and that light was the life of the world. We also invite you to take and have a bowl of water to remember your baptism. And we invite you to have a piece of bread or cracker, uh, juice or wine nearby so that you can participate with us as we share the word that allows God's meal to become a sacrament, to be God's real presence for us. Um, it is the word mixed with the earthly element that allows that to happen, and we trust that the Holy Spirit keeps binding us together, even though we are not able to physically be in the same space. Finally, a very special thank you to those who are here today to help lead this worship. If you would like to help us lead worship, I hope you'll be in touch with any one of our music leaders and our worship leaders. We now begin our worship with listening to the prelude.
God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Please share a sign of that peace with each other and our friends on live stream. <laughs>
reading from Nehemiah. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate, from early morning until midday. In the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book of the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our God. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. reading is from the first letter to Corinthians, the twelfth chapter. For just as a body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. 
But God has so arranged the body, giving the great honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? but strive for the greater gifts. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
which, what does it contain, that book? You want to see? Sometimes we're so busy doing the work of leading worship, we don't get a chance to really see what it is we're doing. We know what that's like. There it says, a reading from Nehemiah. The very thing that one of our church leaders, Mary, read today. And isn't it interesting that in that story, it was the, the leaders of God's people that were reading the word. And today we have two council members president of our council and a council member who were reading God's word. The first reading, the second reading, and the gospel. So this book contains whose word? God's word. And we open it and we have this nice decoration that is there in order to remember. Who do we remember when we see a cross? God and Jesus, right? That we interpret God's word through Jesus' life. And any time we're in worship, we not only, did you notice we say words before we begin the reading? We kind of introduce the reading, and then at the very end, we say the gospel of our Lord, and we respond. Do you wonder why we do that? I wonder why we do that too. Part of the reason is because everything in our worship service is taken from God's word. And if you look in the back of your hymnal and you turn to page, I think 1154 in the back, very back, and these are the small numbers in the back of our hymnal, it will show you, sorry, it's hard to breathe sometimes. It will show you how every part of our worship service a lot of the words, almost all the words we sing in worship, everything is taken from God's Bible. So all parts of the worship service come from God's word, but there is a time in our worship service when we set apart God's word. And so by saying, this is, this is where this comes from, right? From Nehemiah, from 1 Corinthians, and then we respond, we are actually indicating that this is, these are the words of God, this is, these are God's words that we are going to use as a part of the pastor's preaching, the interpretation, and we're setting them apart. And we actually call that the word portion of our, of our worship service. We have a gathering, we have a word, we have the meal, we have the sending. So we take all that we've learned and all we've heard out with us and we use it for the next six days before we come back together again. But those words and those responses that we use are a way of kind of separating out and making sure people know, even though God's word is throughout all of worship, this is the special time. These are the words that we're reading directly from the Bible, and we're seeing them in a little bit more of a context. Does that make sense? So there's lots of ways you can look in there, the different ways you see how even in our gathering, in our, our liturgy, the things we sing, all of that comes from God's, the Holy Bible, from God's Word, and it has those specific places in there. So it's worth looking at and keeping in mind, because God's Word is not meant to be something that we just hear and we just forget about. God's Word is a living Word, and it's meant to come not just into our heart, but into our lives and out into our actions. And so that's the sending part that we take God's word with us and we allow the Holy Spirit to let us use God's word in the world just like Jesus was doing because he was starting with his very first reading from God's word and then he went out and did those very things, didn't he? He preached good news to anyone who was in any way considered poor or not considered at all in the world and he brought good news, he brought healing, he brought hope he continued to show that God's love will always be there for God's people. And that's for you too, no matter what happens. Amen? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your word. Thank you that you make it alive in us and through us. Help us to be your hands, your feet, your voice, your action in the world today and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
grace to you and peace. Peace from God, our joyous creator, through jubilant Jesus, by the juice of the one Holy Spirit. Most of our searching is looking for ways to discover who we already are. Most of our searching is looking for ways to discover who we already are. We are a forgetful species. This quote is taken from a devotion I read this week, and it came to mind again and again as I studied these deliciously rich Bible texts. Nehemiah shows us that God's people know what it's like to imagine an end to hardship, and they're so ready to have all that hardship of exile end just to be confronted with more hard work. They've returned from their time in exile. They've had to rebuild both their physical as well as their spiritual lives. And just when they're ready to rejoice, they're overcome with grief and they weep. They weep, we hear. We don't know why, but we can imagine. They heard God's law. And we know, we know the law drives us to our knees in repentance because we can't possibly keep it by our own power. We can't possibly obey every command that God gives us. But when we are drawn to our knees and we repent of that, we are broken open to receive God's grace, to really receive it, to know that that undeserved forgiveness, goodness, love is ours, and it allows us to keep going and to keep trying again. Maybe they're crying because God's word has broken them open in new ways as they begin their life together yet again. Now, sometimes God's law has been interpreted in, hein in heinous, hurtful, and hate-based ways. Maybe they're crying because they realize the division and disrespect and disillusion those interpretations might cause. Maybe they realize just how much more hard work it's going to take to really bring healing, wholeness, and harmony in their life together. But all the time, God's word reminds us not just who we are, but whose we are and how we are to be. All the time, God's word remembers us as the diverse members of the body of Christ. All the time, God's word, if interpreted like Jesus, is a reason to rejoice right now. And even if it seems like we can't because of all the hardships and hurt, we hear that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so then we turn and we think about the honesty and the directness of Jesus in this passage from Luke. He already humbled himself to submit to John's baptism and we know that he was filled with the Holy Spirit after that, and he was led into the wilderness, and he was tempted by the devil there. But after that all happened, still filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, he returned to his home county. And people started talking about him. He, he was teaching religious folks. He was universally praised by everyone that came to hear him talk. And to, and to be in his company. Yet, we don't know what he taught or preached or interpreted until, until he got to his hometown, until he got to Nazareth. He was given a major prophet. He was given a scroll to read, and it was the major prophet Isaiah. But you see in this reading, Jesus chose the place to both begin and end his reading. As we heard from the, the reading in Nehemiah, it could have been there for hours and hours, but he chose to keep it really short. And as we know from folks who regularly cherry pick from the Bible, this in and of itself is a form of interpretation, isn't it? He chose what to read, and that communicated an interpretation of God's word. It's tempting to remember that this passage fully aligns with his mother Mary's song before he was born. 
Remember, lifting up the lowly, bringing down the powerful. It's tempting to remember that this powerful social justice foundation upon which Jesus began his life and ministry is truly the foundation of the Christian faith. No matter how many people want to poo-poo the social justice gospel. It's tempting to foreshadow how upsetting this preaching was for Jesus' safety. Because after he, in today's terms, marked himself safe from Satan in the wilderness, he will soon have to mark himself safe again from his homeboys. All because of the word he chose to read and his interpretation. You see, first, Jesus made it clear that God's word fulfills in real time. What does he say? It is fulfilled in your hearing. Not in three years, not in 300 years, not in 3,000 years, now. We had a powerful experience of this in our council meeting this last Sunday. In each meeting, a council member chooses and, and reads a Bible passage, and then we respond to it. After some silence, after some time to think about it, we respond. How do we hear it right now? And how does it impact us and our lives? We're so used to keeping God's word only in our heads, in our minds, what people call an over-intellectualized way of being a person who bears God's word. But our monthly practice as a council focus, forces us to pray and hear how God's word invites us now to do, be, or change. And of course, it's the hardest thing of all for us to do because we're so used to pontificating about it. We're so used to spiritualizing it. But the question we have to answer each meeting is how is God's word inviting you to do, be, or change right now? Like many of you last Sunday, many of us were feeling dispirited, distressed, and even some despairing. But by the time we ended this brief study, we were uplifted and encouraged by the Holy to continue being the church together with all of our gloriously diverse gifts that we bring as a council. And even shown in the interpretation of God's word. The Holy Spirit does this among us in worship, in meetings, in prayers, and in caring for one another. Now the second thing Jesus did is he made it clear what God's word is not about. This is something that I've missed through the years because I, of course, have been so focused on the challenges of what Jesus says his ministry is and what he calls us to do with him. But there's something that Jesus leaves out when he quotes the prophet Isaiah. There's a place Jesus puts a, a sort of a period that isn't really there in the original text. Jesus stopped mid-sentence when he read the prophet Isaiah. The scroll says to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. And the day of vengeance of our God. You see, Jesus leaves off that part about vengeance by God. Jesus proclaims the good news to all who are poor. And the word that is used here is more than just what we might think of as maybe economically poor. But Jesus' ministry actions will show he was bringing good news to all people. In all the many ways that word can be used to refer to people who lack status or are often cast aside to the margins in society. Whether that because, be because of their gender, their genealogy, their education, their occupation, whether they are sick or, or in some way differently abled, or how they're perceived to be religiously pure or not. Jesus proclaims that this good news does not include vengeance. So why don't we Christians talk more about Jesus' clear interpretation that God's 
vengeance was not being carried forward, was not being fulfilled by him. Why don't we remember that in our justice and military and church and family systems, why do we feel we have to cave in to the tests and trials and troubles where vengeance carries over because it's been so much a part of our past? The young poet, Amanda Gorman, that we were all uh, introduced to one year ago, wrote about this so well this past week. She wrote that our nation is still haunted by disease, inequality, and environmental crises. But though our fears may be the same, we are not one year later. If nothing else, this must be known. Even as we've grieved, we've grown. Even fatigued, we've found that this hill we climb is one we must mount together. We are battered but bolder, worn but wiser. I'm not telling you to not be tired or afraid. If anything, the very fact that we're weary means we are, by definition, changed. We are brave enough to listen to and learn from our fear. This time will be different because this time we are different. We already are. And yes, she admits when she compares back to one year ago when she admits that she was terrified to stand at that podium and read her poem out loud, she says, yes, I'm still terrified every day. Yet fear can be love trying its best in the dark. Fear can be love trying its best in the dark. So do not fear your fear. Own it. Free it. This isn't a liberation that I or anyone can give you. It's a power you must look for, learn, love, lead, and locate for yourself. I would argue it's a power that the Holy Spirit allows us to look for, learn, love, lead, and locate through God's word. And then she finishes, why? The truth is hope isn't a promise we give. It's a promise we live. Tell it like this, and we, like our words, will not rest. And the rest is history. Isn't today a good day to be reminded, remember, and rejoice that we worship, learn from, and are used by a God who does not choose power that is vengeful or domineering? Isn't every day a good day to be reminded, remember, and rejoice that God in Christ Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, chooses courage, love, and nonviolence? Isn't today a good day to be reminded, remember, and rejoice that we are beloved children of God and fellow workers in the mission Jesus declared 2,000 years ago? Whenever we inevitably lapse into that special way of being human by forgetting who, whose, or why we are, we come to the Word of God and the Holy Supper. We take into our hands the Holy Scriptures and we allow the Holy Spirit to keep binding us together and holding us up in Jesus' loving, living body, alive and working in this world right now. Thanks be to God. We sing verses 1, 2, and 4 in the hymn of the day.
judgment, using the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You reveal yourself to us in the reading of, of Scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your church. Send us out to bring your liberating good news to all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. All creation proclaims your handiwork. Teach us to love the intricate and beautiful bodies that you have created. Bless every creature, small and large. Be with the people of Tonka and all areas affected by the devastating volcanic eruption. God of grace, hear our prayer. You desire that there be no dissension among us. Where we are divided in our society, nation, or world, come quickly to reunite us into one body. Ease conflict, dispel violence, bring an end to war, and allow diplomacy to flourish. We pray especially for our Jewish siblings and Asian American communities grieving acts of violent hatred God of grace, hear our prayer. Anoint with your spirit all who seek your favor. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, people living with disability, those living with pain, those living unhoused, or those living under oppression. God of grace, hear our prayer. Build up the body of Christ in this place. Bless the variety of ministries and ministers in this congregation. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who joins in worship and ministry among us and through technology. We pray especially for those on our prayer list and the health and stamina of all caregivers, emergency responders, teachers, and parents. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Our offering is received at this time, and we invite anyone who has not been able to be with us um, in person to consider donating using the donate button on our website or to send your um, donations to the church to our P.O. box. All of that information is listed in the bulletin. We continue now with this meditation time. <laughs> Thank you. 
stand or remain seated. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to our own world. In the name of Christ, our life. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, it is right to give our Lord thanks Christ and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus keeps teaching us. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your will your be done, be done on, on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us that day our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against, against us. us. Save us from the time of trial, trial, and deliver us from evil. For, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, glory now and forever. Now Amen. And forever. Amen. Receive Christ from God's table. There is a place for you, and enough for all.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your love. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Or you may be seated. We thank everyone who joins us to participate in this service. Please, uh, as soon as you can, take a look at the announcements and particularly the information about our service and congregational meeting next Sunday. Both the service and the congregational meeting will be virtual and uh, there will be uh, information coming to you this coming week. Uh, please take the time uh, now to look at the instructions uh, for next week and let us know before Saturday if you would like uh, hard copies of the bulletin of report, book of reports, and other information. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, and the ballot, um, the, the election of, uh, of uh, new council members and delegate to synod and the nominating committee for next year will be part of that annual meeting, and uh, those instructions will be uh, in the information you see. I would also invite you, if um, you are not uh, comfortable yet with uh, being online and would like to practice, uh, we would like as many people to be involved in the meeting as possible. I would invite you to give me a call or send me a message and uh, I could practice with you. Uh, I've done that with a couple of members, so uh, please let us know before next Saturday anything that you need to be able to participate in the meeting next Sunday. Thank you. And now you're invited to stand or remain seated. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Thank you.